What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com. Dustin's Fish Tanks bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So we're deep in the small tank series. I got to tell you, I'm having an absolute blast. First, we set up a five gallon, then we set up a ten gallon. Tried to set up 15 gallon, but every pet store in town is giving me the runaround. None of them have in stock, so we set up another 10 gallon. So now we've got one, two, three tanks with absolutely no fish in them. But you got to creep on it, folks. You got to take your time when adding fish. But it's about time to add some fish. So here, it's your Sunday. It's your species Sunday. We're gonna bring you my one, two, three, four. I got five on it. Top five nano fish. That's right, folks. I got five on it. Grab your tanks. Let's get keyed. I'm talking about my number five nano fish. Now, this is a fish that I've never actually kept before, but I have caught them in the wild Peru. Yes, folks, we're talking about the dwarf pea puffer. Now, the reason we're talking about this fish, I've never actually kept this fish, but I feel like the Lion King 10 gallon right here is actually screaming for a dwarf pea puffer. Dwarf pea puffers come from India. They are aggressive. Puffers in general, fresh, salt, brackish, whatever, have amazing personalities. So I really think that just a, a sweet little puffer fish swimming around in here would be absolutely amazing. One of the things to note about puffer fish is that they are aggressive and are not easy to keep with a lot of other fish, which is fine because it could be a 10 gallon species only dwarf puffer fish tank. Now the puffer fish that we're talking about is actually coming from India and stays small and is true freshwater. However, yours truly has actually caught freshwater puffers as well in the Amazon. You can click the links around to see where I did catch a wild caught puffer. Truly awesome. What I've been told is that the puffers, they eat so much snail matter that they need something to kind of wear their teeth down. So if you don't consistently feed them a ridiculous amount of snails, you're going to have to like go in and do dental surgery on them and like trim their teeth up. So dwarf puffers. My number five, thinking about putting a little bit of a puffer fish in here. Let me know your thoughts. If I should puffer in this thing, I think it'd be ridiculous. Let me know. My number four nano fish, we're talking about a Epistogrammas, folks. That's right, dwarf cichlid from South America in your face. Loving the Epistogrammas. I fell in love with these fish way back in the day because they're great for a planted tank. They are a cichlid, but they don't tear stuff up. Like the puffer fish, these were collected in Peru. However, these were collected on the Nanai River, a lower pH river, where we caught a slew of Epistogramma bitaniata down there. You can click the link and actually see a video I took while I was collecting these suckers uh, in a puddle in Peru. It was totally an amazing time. I've talked about them before. You can't say Amazon and just think of one river where everything is from. The Amazon is made up of thousands and thousands of different tributaries, pathways, tiny little rivers, little bit of cutoff lakes, whatever, which bring you all kinds of species variation. This is great because this is where epistogrammas come from. That's why there's so many different varieties of pistos. They're on their own little different tributaries and the separate bodies of water produce unique types of epistogrammas. Additionally, epistogrammas are easy to breed and generally speaking, when a fish is easy to breed, it's easy to get a lot of sweet variations of them. Enter epistogramma cockatoides triple red. As if the name epistogramma cockatoides isn't cool enough, check out this fish. Love the long fins, love the red, just a totally cool variation that's been developed because these fish are easy to breed. No, nope, epistos do like the lower pH, so that's something you're gonna wanna watch out for. Another thing to think about with epistos, however, is that they are kind of a, a shyer fish. They do know their role, so to speak, and I kept them in a 220 with rainbows. The rainbows were big, rambunctious, like, you know, black lab dogs, if you will, just all over the place. And they kind of outcompeted the epistos for food. The epistos were a little too shy. So definitely a great nano fish because you want to keep them in like a smaller, more chill setting, a little bit lower pH. Where I collected them from, it looked like basically mud. So something to consider when you are thinking about keeping a pisto. Too many types of pistos to list to do this species any sort of justice. Another one I'm fond of is the Epistogramma Pandoro. I actually collected these, a few of these while we were in the wild as well. I also visited a wholesaler in Iquitos, ran by Edward Pandoro who this fish was named after. A couple other varieties worth checking out is the Cockatoides Blue and the Trifasciata species as well. Drop me a comment on your favorite type of pistos. There are tons of them. Epistogram is my number four favorite nano fish. My number three, my top five nano fish, totally switching gears from a pistos. Don't knock it till you try it, folks. We're talking about fancy guppies. That's right, folks, guppies. Come on, 
Guppy, super easy to breed, hardy. They come in every single freaking color of the rainbow, it seems, and all kinds of variations all around. The only issue that I even remotely have with guppies is sometimes if they're overbred so much, they have like super long tails and they can't swim, and I just feel sorry for those fish. With that said, this kind of breeding has produced some really insane fish. Guppies, you can get as fancy as you want, spend a bunch of money, get some really crazy varieties that have been bred a bunch, or you can be that kid at the pet store that makes the person pick out the feeder guppies that have a little bit of fanciness on them so you can get some cool fish for only 10 cents. Keeping guppies is super easy. I've found they like to be kept in just a little bit harder water, but they can live without a heater. They can handle the abuse that a beginner might give them. They can handle big water changes. Like I said, they breed like crazy. I like to breed them with floating plants. I found a lot of floating plants uh, really seems to help guppies just get after it for back of a lack of a better term so uh totally having fun with some guppies and i think the guppies would look kind of sweet in here i don't know let me know what you think couple guppies swimming around here sitting on my desk staring right at me swimming all around so guppies my number three and my top five nano fish my number two and my top five nano fish you gotta roll with the classics, folks. You gotta roll with Neon Tetra's look. I've been down to Peru, as I've said. I've collected fish in the wild. There's a bajillion types of different Tetras. Neon Tetras are one of the top, most colorful Tetras. There are other colorful varieties. And I know I hear what the Cardinal people are saying right now. I like Cardinals more than I like Neons. Look, do what works for you, I will say this. Neon Tetras, generally speaking, are easier to keep than Cardinals. Cardinals require a warmer temperature. Neons can handle a little bit of lower temps. They also like a little bit of higher pH, unlike Cardinals, which like the lower pH. Generally speaking, most people have more harder water than soft. Me, I have harder water than I do soft. I do not try to battle my water. My water comes out a little bit harder and I run my tanks a little colder. Neon Tetras are for me, they're fantastic schoolers. Rachel and I talked about this the other day. When you get Neons, folks, get a ton of them. Add them slowly, but get a ton of them because you'll get this really crazy like little behavior. You can click the links around. I did a video on community fish behavior, but basically when you have a ridiculous amount of neon tetras together, the behavior is totally different. They can kind of like spread out and be all over the place and have these like tiny little like schools battling back and forth. Just super awesome. I kept them in college. Totally love them. Neon tetras, fantastic beginner fish. You can keep them in a small tank. Like I said, no heater. The only problem with neons is when they go, they go quick. And speaking of not battling your water this tank at one point had about a hundred of them in there until my wonderful county decided to raise the chlorine levels after a big rainstorm that's a big tip too if it rains hard your city might be adding more chlorine than you know to your water i didn't triple down my dechlor and i lost a ton of them they went fast folks i miss my neons neon tetras my number two in my top five nanofish and my number one, my top five, my top nano fish, number one nano fish is a betta fish. Betta fish, Dustin? Yes. Betta fish, Dustin is saying. And here's why. First and foremost, I was a history major. I love the history of these little betta fish. They were named after the betta clan, like clan in the front, let your feet stomp. They're named after a fierce warrior clan. How cool is that? Don't kid yourself. That's awesome. Also, they were so popular with the fighting and battling and breeding of these things that the king of Siam himself actually taxed and regulated the sale of betta fish and the fighting, which I think is pretty cool. Now look, I don't think that keeping male betas together and watching them fight is even remotely cool, okay? And obviously, as you know, if you keep two male betas together, they will fight and battle, presumably to the death. That said, that breeding and that popularity of the fish is probably why we have so many of them readily available today. They're so easy to breed. Betta fish, you can keep them in a small container. The one thing with betta fish, and I've lost some because of this, is they do like a little bit of warmer water, like their water above 75, if you will. I've seen them pound little like critters out in the greenhouse. This guy was actually out in the greenhouse with me. So betta fish, I'm loving them. You can keep them in those little vases. They prefer at least two or three gallons. They can almost like run out of water as long as they stay moist they can live they're actually a labyrinth breeder so they can breathe air so they can handle the abuse of a beginner the only thing i really question with them is just you got to keep your temps a little bit higher obviously don't mix males together but betta fish i love them and the thing that i love most about betta fish and it's the same thing i love about koi is this you could get betta fish in any single variety you want. Now, I'm not saying you have to like all betta fish, but I could see myself being that creepy old man when I'm older where I just have a bunch of different varieties all around because they've been bred so much. You can get any coloring, but same with koi, right? Every betta fish 
could be unique. You know, you could pick out that specific one. Like this is the exact fish that I want for this reason. Like I picked him out because that's the style I want. You can pick out a white one if you want. You can pick out a pink one if you want. They come in all different varieties. So better fish are my number one favorite top five nano fish. And you can see the clip here of me letting this guy go. Of course, he's shy on camera the first time, but I'm pumped to finally get a fish in here. Note, this may not be the final spot for this guy. I might swap him out if I do find my hands on some dwarf puffer fish. Do me a favor, folks. Let me know your favorite nano fish and why. Maybe I'm overlooking something. I haven't really creatively been around what to put in these tanks yet. I've got the better fish in here, but he might move. I've also got the five gallon over here. Not really sure, thinking the guppies, maybe even the black uh, live bird. So I'd love to get your feedback, your comments on maybe like, yo, dude, if you thought of these and I'm totally missing something. Yeah, get excited. I got a lot of fun stuff ahead. I got a couple collabs coming up. I've also got a fantastic uh, fish room of a ledge I didn't have enough time to spend at a while back. So if you like what I'm doing, subscribe, bottom right somewhere. Everybody have a fabulous freaking week and tank on later. Creep on in, on in, on in.